Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching you how to make a modern peplum sweater. Pair two things I love for this number. We have a clean three-quarter length sleeve upper half with all the poofy love down bottom. Perfectly balanced as things should be. Speaking of balance, if you're looking for balance for your make list, you're in the wrong place. We've got too much. But if you're into that sort of thing, we've got hundreds of modern crochet designs with more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work by a total of 650 grams of yarn. That's 1,200 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 4 and 5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite ride at a water park. For me, it's got to be the Lazy River. I actually don't know how to swim, so that's about as adventurous as I get. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using 4 stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we expand to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our Category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 5mm hook, and start off by making a chain that reaches from about an inch underneath our underarm to right around where our belly button is. And I've already measured mine out. For me, that's going to be a total of about 8 inches or 20 centimeters. So, I'm going to start by making a chain of 35. And now that we have our chain, we're going to start off by doing our first half double crochet row. And the first one that we're going to do is going to be a decrease. So, start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain two. There's one, there's two. Now, that chain doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And how we're going to do our decrease is we're going to start with the yarn over, we're going to insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, yarn over, pull through, we should get three loops on our hook, and then we're going to insert our hook into that following chain, yarn over, and pull through. Now once we get those four loops on our hook, just yarn over, and pull through all four, and that is our decrease of two half double crochets. This decrease end is going to be the bottom of our piece, so all we're going to do from here is put one half double crochet into every chain, and we're going to leave the last one so that we can do an increase into there together. Let's just do the next half double crochet together. So starting with the yarn over, you're going to insert our hook into that following chain, yarn over, and pull through. Once we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over and pull through all three. That's a half double crochet, let's just do one more. So starting with the yarn over, insert your hook into that following chain, pull through, when we have those three on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And I'll meet you back at the end of the row when we have just one chain left. Now that we've put one half double crochet into every chain, we should have left the last one. Now we're going to be doing an increase into there. So let's going to start with the yarn over and inserting into our last chain. We're going to insert with one half double crochet. And then into that same last chain, a second half double crochet. Now from here, we're going to be doing a back loop slip stitch row, but for the entirety of this top panel, we're not going to be doing any increases or decreases for any of our back loop slip stitch rows. So all we're going to do is chain one, flip our work, and then into the last stitch from our previous row, we are going to insert our hook into that back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us, and then we're going to yarn over, pull through both of those loops on our hook. Now there's our first back loop slip stitch, let's do another one. Inserting your hook into that following stitch's back loop, yarn over, 
pull through everything. And then just to do the next, insert your hook into that following stitches back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. And that's it. Continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So now that we've made our way all the way down with our back loop slip stitch row, we're going to get started on our falling row, which is going to be more half double crochets, but now they're within the back loops. So how we start off every half double crochet row is with a chain two. So there's one, there's two, and then we're going to flip our work. Now, since we're along the bottom of our piece, we're only going to be decreasing into every other half double crochet row. And we're doing that so that the peak of the front panel doesn't come up a little too high. So all we're going to do is just yarn over, find the last back loop from our previous row, insert your hook, pull through, pull through all three. So we're just inserting with a regular half double crochet, putting one into every stitch, leaving the last one so that we can increase again. So let's just do another back loop half double crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook into that following back loop, pull through, pull through all three. And continue to do this until we have just one stitch left. But a really quick tip that I have for you guys is, I do like to insert my stitch markers into the half double crochet rows where I did a decrease just so I know which ones I need to decrease into so I don't need to go back and count. So I'm just going to insert my stitch marker into my previous half double crochet row. I'm not going to insert it into this one because we didn't do a decrease. And I'm going to continue on to my half double crochets and I'll meet you back. So now that we've made our way all the way down to the end of our row, we should have all left our last stitch. So now we're going to do an increase into that last stitch. So starting with yarn over and inserting your hook into that last back loop, insert your hook with one half double crochet, and then into that same last back loop with another half double crochet. And from here, we're going to switch back out to our back loop slip stitch rows. And like I said in the previous clip, we aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases into this row. So to start with a chain one, Flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and then that is it. So all we're going to do is repeat our two previous rows until we get a portion that can stretch from mid underarm over to the corner of our underarm, making sure that we end on a slip stitch row. Now just a really quick tip that I have for you guys is make sure that we are still starting our half double crochets, decreasing into every other row. I'll meet you guys back right after a back loop slip stitch row so that we can continue on with our underarm. All right, so I am back with the first half of my underarm portion. Now I just have a total of four rows and my width is roughly an inch and a half or four centimeters unstretched. And now we're gonna continue on with another underarm portion so that this can curve nice and smooth all the way up to the shoulder. So what we're gonna do, since we all should have ended on a slip stitch row, is do our half double crochet row. Now the half double crochet row may be a little bit different for everyone. If you are on your half double crochet row where you have to start with a decrease like me, Go ahead and do that. But if you're on your half double crochet row where you don't have to do your decrease, just make your way all the way up, putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. But for those of you that do have to decrease, I'm just gonna do the first decrease with you guys and let you guys do the rest of this row on your own. So right after our slip stitch row, just chain two and then flip our work. Now really quickly, just to do our decrease, we are going to yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through into that next stitch's back loop, pull through, pull through all three. And then from here for every one, we're gonna be putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last stitch so that we can increase together. And if you guys did a decrease like me, don't forget to insert your stitch marker into the bottom of the row just so we can keep track. All right, so now that we've made our way all the way up with our back loop half double crochet rows, now into the last stitch, we're gonna be doing an increase of three half double crochets. So it's gonna be pretty simple. We're all gonna start with a yarn over and insert your hook into that last stitches back loop with our first half double crochet. Insert into that same back loop with our second half double crochet. And then once more into that back loop with a third half double crochet. And that's that. From here, we're gonna do our back loop slip stitch row, but remember we're not gonna be doing any increases or decreases. So just chain one, Flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And that is it. From here on out, we're gonna be continuing to repeat our two previous rows. So our back loop half double crochet that ends on an increase of three half double crochets now 
and then a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. Starting our half double crochet rows by decreasing into every other half double crochet row. And from there, we're just gonna continue to repeat those rows until this portion that we have stretches from mid underarm over to the front of our body, making sure that we end on a half double crochet row so that we can work on our chain that goes straight up to our shoulder from there. I'll meet you guys back once I have that all finished up. All right, so I am back with the rest of my underarm portion. Now I have a total of seven rows and that is unstretched and this width is just about two inches or five centimeters. And what we're gonna do from here, since we all should have ended right after back loop half double crochet row, is make a chain that reaches all the way up to the top of our shoulder. So I went ahead and already measured mine out. I need a total of five inches or 13 centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 20. And now that we have our chain, we're going to do the following row in a row sequence, which is going to be a back loop slip stitch row all the way down. So from here, all we're gonna do is block off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, you're gonna insert with a slip stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through everything on our hook. And then that's it. We're gonna continue to put one slip stitch into every chain, and I will meet you guys back once we reach this junction right over here. So now that we made our way all the way down with our slip stitches, we have reached this junction and all we're gonna do is continue to do slip stitches, but they're gonna be within the back loop so that we can continue our ribbing. So we may need to turn our work just a little bit, but all we're gonna do is find that first stitch from our previous row, insert your hook into that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. So a back loop slip stitch per usual. And we're just gonna continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way all the way down. And then right after that, we're going to do a half double crochet row, making sure that we're decreasing in the beginning of the row if we need to decrease into it. But we're gonna put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way up to the top. And from there, we're just going to continue to repeat those two rows. So a back loop slip stitch row with absolutely no increasing and decreasing. And then a back loop half double crochet row, making sure that we start our row with a decrease if we need to. But we're just going to continue to repeat those two rows until we get a shoulder portion that's about two inches away from the base of our neck because we will have a collar as well. I'll meet you guys back right after a back loop slip stitch row so we can get started on the cup. All right, so I am back with my shoulder portion and I now have a total of 10 rows. My width is now about two and a half inches or six centimeters. And now we're gonna get started on the decrease side of our cup. So first things first, we're going to want to put this up to ourselves, making sure that we're stretching it as if we're wearing it because it does give a really good stretch. And we're gonna wanna insert our stitch marker right where we want the top of our cup to be because remembering we are gonna do a little decrease. So I've already inserted my stitch marker right where I want mine to be, which is just about five inches or 13 centimeters from the top. So I inserted my stitch marker into the 23rd stitch. Now what I'm gonna do from here, since we all should have ended right after back loop slip stitch row, so along the bottom, is do our half double crochet row, remembering to decrease if you guys need to decrease, and then continue to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch until we have two stitches right before our stitch marker. So we are back and we've just put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two right before our stitch marker, and now we're gonna do a decrease into those last two stitches. So all we're gonna do is yarn over, insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then also insert your hook into that last back loop, and pull through. Now once we have those four loops on our hook, just yarn over, and pull through all four. Now right after that, we're gonna be doing a back loop slip stitch row. So chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And I just want to decrease with you guys just one more time. So along the bottom, do a chain two, Flip our work and then do your half double crochet row, making our way all the way up, making sure that we're decreasing into the first two stitches of the half double crochet row if you guys need to. And we're going to leave two stitches at the end so that we can decrease together once more. All right, so we've just made our way down with our back loop slip stitch row and back up with our back loop half double crochet row, making sure that we started with a decrease if we needed to. And we have left the last two stitches so that we can do another decrease together since we're along the top. So all we're gonna do is yarn over, insert your hook into that second to last stitch's back loop, pull through, and then into that last stitch's back loop, pull through. Now once we have those four loops on our hook, just yarn over, pull through all four, 
and that's it. We're just going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until this can stretch all the way over to mid chest, making sure that we end on a half double crochet row and making sure that we're still doing our decreases into the beginning of every other half double crochet row. But I'll meet you guys back once we have this portion all finished up so we can do the other side of our front panel. All right, so I am back with the first half of my cuff. I now have a total of 21 rows and my width is now roughly five inches or 13 centimeters unstretched. And we should have all ended on our half double crochet row. So our following row is going to be our middle row, which if we're following our row sequence, it's gonna be another back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So pretty typical. So all we're gonna do from here is chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And I'll meet you guys back at the end of this row. All right, so I've just made my way all the way down with my middle row, and now it's just a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. And now we're going to do the other half of our cuff. So instead of doing decreases into the tops of every half double crochet row, we're now gonna be doing increases. But the bottom's gonna be a little bit different for everyone, so let's just get that started. So as you guys can see, my last half double crochet row started with a decrease. And since we need everything to be mirrored on the other side, my next half double crochet row that I'm about to get started with is going to start with an increase now. But since we are mirroring everything, if your last half double crochet row didn't have a decrease, you will not be doing a decrease. And we're just doing that to make sure that we end on the same amount of stitches once we're all finished up. So since my following row is going to start with an increase, I'm going to show you guys how to do that and then show you guys how we're going to increase along the top as well. So getting started on my next half double crochet row, you're going to chain two and flip our work. Now, like I said, I'm going to be starting with an increase. Now, if you guys don't have to start with your increase, just put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last stitch, and then I will meet you back within the following clip so that we can do that increase together. But all we're gonna do from here, if you do need to start with an increase, is yarn over, and then insert your hook into that first back loop with a half double crochet, and then into that same back loop with a second half double crochet. And that is our increase. I'm gonna be inserting my stitch marker into there as well. And from here, I'm just gonna be putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one so that we can increase together. All right, so we are on the other side of our middle row. We made our way all the way up with our back loop half double crochets and we left the last stitch. And now we're gonna be doing an increase into that last back loop. So yarn over, insert your hook into that last stitches back loop with one half double crochet, and then into that same back loop with a second half double crochet, and then that is it. From here, we're gonna do our back loop slip stitch row. So just chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch with no increases and no decreases. And all we're gonna do from there is repeat our two previous rows. So a back loop half double crochet row, making sure that we're starting with an increase if we need to, and then making sure that we're increasing along the ends of each of our rows as well. And then a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. And we're gonna be repeating those two rows for the same amount of rows that we have from this side of our middle row over to the first cup row that we have right over here. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can work straight up to our shoulder. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up the increase side of our front panel for our cup. And now we're going to do the shoulder. So since we all should have ended on a back loop half double crochet row that ended along the top, from here, we're gonna start off by making a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we started this side of our cup. So if you guys have my numbers, I've actually skipped a total of 23 stitches over here. So along this end, I'm going to make a chain of 23. And now that we have our chain, we're going to do a slip stitch into every chain and then a back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way all the way down. And then we're gonna do our back loop half double crochet row, making sure that we are starting with an increase if we need to start with an increase. So I'm just gonna get started on this following row with you guys and let you guys do the rest of your shoulder portion on your own. So just working into our chains, we're gonna start by blocking off that last chain do a chain of one and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, you're going to insert with a slip stitch. And that's it. From here, we're gonna be putting one slip stitch into every chain. Once we reach the body portion, 
we're going to be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then from there we're just going to continue to do our back loop slip stitch row and back loop half double crochet row until we have the same amount of rows as our first shoulder portion. And then once we do, I will meet you guys back so we can do our underarm. Alright, so my second shoulder portion is all finished. I have a total of 7.5 inches, or 19 centimeters, and now we're going to need to start working on our underarm. So the first thing we're going to have to do is insert our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made when we worked our way up to the shoulder on this side. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a chain of 20. So along this end, I counted down 20 stitches and then inserted my stitch marker into there. Now from here, we're going to be doing our back loop half double crochet row because we all should have ended along the bottom. And we're going to do our back loop half double crochet row all the way up until we have three stitches right before a stitch marker, remembering to increase into the beginning of that half double crochet row if you guys need to. All right, so we have just made our way all the way up with our back loop half double crochet row. We have left three stitches right before our stitch marker stitch, and now we're going to do a decrease of three because the last half double crochet row that we did for our other underarm portion was an increase of three. So all we're going to do is yarn over, insert your hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then also into that last back loop, and pull through. Now all together we should have one, two, three, four, and five loops on our hook. So just yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and that is our decrease of three half double crochets. Now from here, just chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And once we reach the end of the row, I want to do another decrease of three with you guys. So chain two, start your back loop half double crochet row, remembering to increase if you guys need to, and leave the last three stitches. All right, so we have just made our way all the way down to our back loop slip stitch row and then all the way back up with our back loop half double crochet row. Now we're going to do a decrease of three back loop half double crochets since we should have left the last three stitches. So we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that third to last back loop and pull through. Next, insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then into that last back loop, yarn over and pull through. Now once we have all five of those loops on our hook, just yarn over and pull through all five. And that's it. From here we're just going to continue to repeat our two previous rows. So our back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, and a back loop half double crochet row remembering to increase if we need to at the beginning of the row, that ends on a decrease of three back loop half double crochets. And we're just going to continue to repeat those two rows until we have the same amount of rows as the second half of our underarm portion right over here. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can do the last underarm portion that we started off with on the other side. Alright, so I am back and the first half of my underarm portion is all finished up. Now we're going to have to do the second half of our underarm portion, which is exactly the same way as the first one, but instead of doing a decrease of three, we're going to be doing a decrease of two along the ends. So all we're going to do is our back loop slip stitch row. So as you guys can see, I've already done that because that one doesn't have any increases or decreases. So we're just going to do that all the way down. Next, we're going to do our back loop half double crochet row, remembering to increase if we need to. And then we're going to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two. And then I'll meet you back just to decrease with you guys just once more. All right, so we've done our back loop half double crochet row all the way back up, leaving the last two. So we're just going to do a decrease of two together, even though you guys already know how to do it. So just as a refresher, yarn over, insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through into that last back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four. And then from here, we're just going to do a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases and continuing to repeat those two rows. So a back loop half double crochet row, remembering to increase if we need to at the beginning of the row. That ends on a decrease of two back loop half double crochets and a back loop slip stitch row until we have the same amount of rows as our underarm portion right over here. Once we do, go ahead and do a chain up a one and cut, and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so I am back, and the entirety of my front panel is all finished. Now my total width is just about eight and a half inches or 22 centimeters unstretched, and now we're going to do our back panel. And the back panel is going to be almost the same as the front panel, but we aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases along the bottom, and we will not have this neck cut out. 
So it's going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to talk you guys through it. So first things first, we're all going to get started by making a chain, the same amount of chains that we made when we started off our shoulder portion. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a total of 35 chains. So I'm going to make another chain of 35. All right, so now that we have our chain, we're going to get started with our first half double crochet row. Now it's going to be done exactly the same way as our front panel, but with no increases or no decreases along the bottom. So after our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and chain two. And then into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a half double crochet, not with a decrease. So go ahead and insert, pull through, pull through all three. And from here, continue to put one half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last chain just so I can remind you guys that we are going to do our increase. Alright, so we've made our way all the way up with our half double crochet row, leaving the last chain and as a refresher, we're just going to do an increase of two into that last chain. And from here, we're just going to repeat our same underarm portion that we did for the front panel, but with no increases and no decreases. So I'm just going to talk you guys through it really quickly. So this portion is going to depend on the amount of rows that you guys have for each of our underarm sections, because remember we did it in two different sections. So for the first few, we're going to end each of our half double crochet rows with an increase of two with our back loop slip stitch rows in between, not having any increases or decreases. And then for the second half of our underarm portion, we're going to end our half double crochet rows with an increase of three. Once we have the same amount of rows as our front panel's underarm, I'll meet you guys back just to remind you how we're going to do our shoulder. All right, so I'm back with my underarm portion. And just to remind you guys, I did not do any increases or decreases along the bottom of my back panel. But what we're gonna do from here is just make a chain for the same amount of chains that we made for the shoulder portion. And all we're gonna do is our back loop slip stitch rows and our back loop half double crochet rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows as our first shoulder row right over here, working our way across our back to our last shoulder row right over here. So since we have our chain, we're just going to do our back loop slip stitch row, back loop half double, and then I'll meet you guys back once when this solid back portion is all finished. All right, so I'm back and I've just finished up the entirety of my back panel. Now, right after this, we're going to be doing the same underarm portion that we did for the front panel, but we aren't going to do the increases along the bottom. So if you guys have my numbers, just insert your stitch marker into the 20th stitch from the top, repeat your same underarm portion, do a chain up one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so now that both our front and our back panel are all finished up, the next thing we're gonna do is our shoulder seam. So first things first, we're gonna wanna make sure that our work is flipped inside out, meaning the ribbing that we have for both the front and back panel is facing each other along the inside. And then once we have that, we're gonna be inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side slip stitch row and then two single crochets into every side half double crochet row. So let's just get that started. The first side row that we should have should be a side slip stitch row. So we're just going to find that top loop within the front panel and then insert your hook into there. And then we're going to find the top loop within the back panel and then insert your hook into there as well. Now once we have that, we're just going to single crochet once and that is our first single crochet working into our side slip stitch row. Now our following row should be our side half double crochet row, which is this wider row right here. So go ahead and find that top loop and insert your hook into there. And then into the back panel, insert your hook into that top loop as well. And then single crochet once. And then since this is a side half double crochet row, we're gonna be putting one more single crochet into that side row. So we're gonna be finding the same top loop within the front panel and same top loop within the back panel should be a little bit easier since they should be gathered. And then we're just going to single crochet a second time. And then from there, we're just gonna continue to repeat this making our way all the way down so we don't have any more side rows left to work into within the front panel and then do a chain up of one and cut. Once we have that, go ahead and do the same thing that we just did here on the other side and I'll meet you back. All right, so now that our shoulders are all seamed up, the next thing we're gonna seam is our sides. And first things first, we're now gonna to wanna to make sure that our work is flipped right side out because this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam. 
So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook. Pull through and then do a chain up of one to secure and this outside loop slip stitch seam is going to look like another slip stitch row. So let's get this started. Start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel. And then we're going to insert our hook only into that front loop or the loop that's nearest to us. And then next we're going to find that following stitch within the back panel. And then this one we're only going to be inserting our hook into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. And then we're going to yarn over, pull through everything. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook only into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, only insert into that back loop. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then that's it. We're just going to continue to do this, making our way all the way up. And we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seamed together, we can get started on our bottom band. So first things first, make sure that our work is slipped right side out. We're going to flip our work upside down so that we're now looking at the bottom, and we're going to be inserting our five millimeter hook into any one of our side rows along the bottom. But all we're going to do is insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and pretty much the same way that we seam the shoulders, we're going to be putting two single crochets into every side half double crochet, and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. So let's just do the first few. So my first side row is this side half double crochet row right here. If yours is a side slip stitch row first, that's completely fine, but I'm just going to work into my half double crochet row first. So I'm going to insert into that top loop with one, and then also with a second single crochet. Now that I'm at my side slip stitch row, I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook with just one single crochet, and then that's it. We're going to continue to put two single crochets into every side half double, and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. But once we've made our way all the way around, go ahead and slip stitch into that chain space, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so we've just made our way all the way around with our single crochet row. Now from here, we are going to switch out to our four millimeter hook and we're going to start by working on the length of our band. So from here, we're going to make a chain the length that we want our band to be. Now I would like for mine to be just about an inch and a half or four centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of eight. Now this is going to be a slip stitch band. So let's get this started. Start by blocking off that last chain and then we're going to do a chain one into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. Go ahead and insert with a slip stitch. So insert your hook. Once we have those two loops on our hook, just yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. And a quick tip when it comes to doing our slip stitches is make sure that we're not accidentally tugging too tightly after we finish every stitch. Otherwise the following rows can be a little tight to work into. So let's do this again. Inserting your hook into that following chain, insert, yarn over, and pull through everything on our hook and continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we put one slip stitch into every chain, we're going to need to connect it into the base. So start by finding that next available stitch into the base. We're going to insert our hook with a slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through everything to close off this first row. And then to work our way up to the following row, we're going to find that next available stitch into the base insert your hook into there with another slip stitch and then flip your work. And then from here on out, they're going to be back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. So to get this started, we're going to find the last stitch from our previous row, insert your hook in through that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch is back loop, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything. And then we're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way down. And now that we're at the end of our row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And now that we're back at the base, we're going to connect it together just once more, and it's going to be connected the same way that we did the first row. So just as a refresher, find that next available stitch into the base and slip stitch into there. And then to work our way up to the following row, just slip stitch into that next stitch flip our work and then make our way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then that is it. We're just going to continue to do our back loop slip stitch rows, making sure that we're connecting it into the base the same way that we have just done. Go ahead and make your way all the way around and then I will meet you guys back. 
All right, so we have just made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so let's do our outside loop slip stitch seam together. So first things first, we're gonna wanna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, and we're gonna be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front panel and the back panel. And this is going to be the same seam that we did for the sides, so let's get just the first one started off together. Start by finding that first fillable stitch into the front panel, and then we're gonna insert our hook only in through that front loop. Next, we're gonna find the next fillable stitch into the back panel and insert only into that back loop. And when we have all three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we're back and our bottom band is all seamed up. Now the next thing we're gonna start working on is our peplum, but we are going to need to single crochet along the bottom of our band first. So start by inserting our four millimeter hook into any one of our side rows, and all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every side row, so let's get that started. Start by inserting your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, I'm going to find my first side row, and this is mine right here. It's this raised row, so I'm just gonna find that top loop along the edge of that row, and then single crochet just once. Next, this is my next side slip stitch row, which is this divot right here. I'm gonna find that top loop and single crochet into there once as well. And continue to put one single crochet into every side row. When we make our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I'll meet you back. All right, so I am back and my single crochet row along the bottom of my waistband is all finished up. Now the next thing we're gonna do is do the length of our band. So first thing we're gonna do is switch out our hook back to our five millimeter hook. Then we're gonna make an odd number chain the length that we'd like for the peplum portion to be. And I would like mine to be about six inches or 15 centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 25. So now that we have our chain, we're gonna get started with the texture for our peplum portion, which is going to be the Suzette stitch. So start by blocking off that last chain and then do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And we're gonna start by doing our first Suzette stitch set, which is a single crochet and double crochet into the same stitch. So we're gonna bring our hook down into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook with a single crochet. And then also into that same stitch, a double crochet. Now that is our first Suzette stitch set all finished up. So the next we're gonna do is another one. And right after every set, we are always gonna be skipping that following stitch because that double crochet counts as that stitch. If we don't skip it, we'll be accidentally increasing, which is what we don't wanna do for this pattern. So just skip the following stitch and then into the stitch right after that, one single crochet, and then also into that same stitch, one double crochet. And that's it. We're just gonna to continue to skip a stitch and then into the stitch right after that, single crochet and double crochet into the same stitch, making our way all the way down until we have just two stitches left. All right, so we have made our way all the way down with our Suzette stitches and we should have two stitches left. Now what we're gonna do is half double crochet into the last chain that we have just to close off this row. So skip that second to last stitch and then into the last one. We're just gonna insert with a half double crochet. And now that we're along the base, we're gonna need to slip stitch it into there to close off this row. So all we're gonna do is find that next available stitch, and then we're gonna insert our hook with a slip stitch, and now our first row is all closed off. Now we need to work our way up to the following row. So find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, and then flip our work. And from here, we're just gonna do our Suzette stitches, making our way all the way down again. So just to do the first set with you guys, we're gonna find the last stitch from our previous row, which should be the top of that half double crochet. And we're just gonna be inserting our hook into there with a single crochet and a double crochet. And then per usual, we're gonna skip the following stitch and then into the stitch right after that, a single crochet and a double crochet again. And a really quick tip that I have for you guys when it comes to doing our Suzette stitch sets, each of our sets is going to be worked into the previous row's single crochet stitch to get the texture that we want. But continue to do this, making our way all the way down until we have just two stitches left. All right, so we have made our way all the way down with our second row of Suzette stitches, and now we need to close off our row. Now the last stitch that we have could be a little tucked underneath like how mine is right here, 
but we're just going to close it off with a half double crochet like how we always do. So just yarn over, skip that second to last stitch, and then half double crochet into the last, and that's it. From here, to start up our next row, chain one, flip our work, and then we're going to do our Suzette stitch, making our way all the way back down, leaving the last two stitches again, and then I'll meet you guys back so we can connect it into the base together. All right, so we've made our way all the way down with our third row and we should have two stitches left. And we're gonna close it off the same way. So just half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And then that's it. Now, when we're connecting it into the base, it's gonna be a little bit different. So since we need this to ruffle up just a little bit since this is a peplum, we're not gonna be inserting into that following stitch. We're actually gonna be inserting our hook into the same stitch that our previous rows worked into. This is mine right over here. So all we're gonna do is insert our hook into there. It might be a little tight since our previous rows worked into there, but that's completely fine. But what we're gonna do from there is just slip stitch that row together. And now this odd number row is all finished up. And then to work our way up to the next row, which is our even number row, that's gonna be per usual. So just find that next available stitch into our base, slip stitch into there, flip our work, and then do our Suzette stitches, making our way all the way down again. And from here on out, we're just gonna continue to repeat those two rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam our peplum together. All right, so I'm back and I've just made my way all the way around with my Suzette stitch rows and my peplum is all done. We just need to seam it together. So we're going to need to start by flipping our work wrong side out. Next, we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're going to pull through and then do a chain up of one to secure. And since we already know how to do this type of seam, let's just do the first one. Start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel, insert your hook into there. Find that next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook into there, and then single crochet them together. And then that's it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into and then do a chain up one and cut and then we can get started on the sleeve. All right, so we are back. Our peplum is all finished up and now we're gonna do our sleeve. So first things first with our sleeve, we're going to want to make sure that our work is slipped right side out. And then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the last stitch of our side seam. And from here, we're gonna start with a single crochet row making our way up and around. So we're gonna start by inserting our yarn onto our hook pull through, and then we're gonna do a chain up of one to secure. So making sure that we're working clockwise or to the left, we're gonna be putting two single crochets into every side half double crochet row, and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. So pretty much the same way that we single crocheted along the bottom. So let's just do the first few. So start by finding our first side row. It should be a side half double crochet row. We're gonna find that top loop. And then if you guys would like, since we should have a handful of tail ends, just place it over that loop that we just insert our hook into. And if we do it this way, then our tail ends are gonna be worked into the single crochet row so that we don't need to seam it in later. But now that we're here, all we're gonna do is single crochet. And if you guys wanna take a look at the tail ends, they are directly in the middle of the single crochet so we don't have to deal with them later. But since we just did one single crochet into the side row, we need to be doing one more since we're into our half double crochets. So into that same side loop, insert with a second single crochet, just like that. And then from here, our next side row should be the side slip stitch row, so we're gonna find that top loop. Insert your hook into there with just one single crochet. And then just to do the next side row as well, this is our next side half double crochet row. So find that top loop and insert with a single crochet, and then into that same side loop, another single crochet. And then for our side slip stitch row, just one single crochet into that top loop. And then that's it. We're gonna continue to do that until we reach the shoulder portion. Once we do, we're just gonna be putting one single crochet into every stitch, working our way all the way up and around. And then once we reach the side rows along the back right here, we're gonna do the same thing. So two single crochets into every side half double, and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. And right before I let you guys go, I just have a really quick tip for you guys. Once we finish up the single crochet for this underarm portion right over here, so into all of our side rows, we just wanna make sure that we're keeping that amount of numbers in mind because we're going to need to maintain that number when we go in with our other half double crochet rows. But go ahead and do that, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, 
right, so our single crochet row is all finished up and now we're going to do our back loop slip stitch row. So the back loop slip stitch rows for the sleeve are going to be exactly the same as the front and back panels, so absolutely no increases and no decreases, so this is going to be pretty simple. Right after we slip stitch into that chain space, all we're going to do is chain one and flip our work, making sure that we are flipping our work because we want to make sure that we are seeing the ribbing. And then we're just going to make our way all the way around, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. All right, so now that our slip stitch row is all finished up, we're now going to do our half double crochet rows. And I'm using air quotes for half double crochets because we're actually going to be starting the rows with single crochets. Now, right after I slip stitch into that chain space, we're going to chain one and flip our work. Now, after we flip our work, we want to make sure that we're working clockwise or to the left again. But what we're going to do is put one back loop single crochet for the same amount of stitches that we made when we were working into our underarm portion. So if you guys have my numbers, I had a total of 11 single crochets right here. So I'm going to be doing 11 back loop single crochets. So let's just do the first few. Now this is my first stitch right over here. I'm going to insert my hook into that back loop with my first single crochet. And we're going to continue to do that until we have the same amount of stitches as our underarm single crochets. So this is my next inserting into that back loop with a single crochet. And I'm going to continue to do this until I have a total of 11. All right, now that I have my 11 single crochets, right after the single crochet portion, we're gonna be doing a decrease of two single crochets, just so that this can cinch nice and snug around the arm. So what we're gonna do is insert our hook into that following stitches back loop, yarn over and pull through. Now also insert your hook into that following stitches back loop, yarn over, pull through, and once we have all three of those loops on our hook, just yarn over, pull through all three, and then right after that decrease, we're going to be putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. So just do the first one, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that following stitches back loop with a half double, and continue to put one half double crochet into every stitch until we have the same amount of stitches as our underarm stitches left, plus an additional two, and those extra two is going to be where we decrease. So since I had a total of 11 single crochets, I'm going to leave a total of 13 stitches left, and that extra two is gonna come for the decrease. So I'll meet you guys back once we made our way all the way up and around so that we can decrease and close our row off with our single crochets. All right, so I've just made my way all the way up and over with my half double crochets, and I have left the amount of stitches that I need to close it off with a decrease and then the rest of my single crochets. So what we're gonna do is start with our decrease into the next two stitches. We're gonna insert into that back loop, pull through, into that following stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, and then continue on with putting one back loop single crochet into every stitch, and when we reach the end of the row, slip stitch into that chain space, do a chain up of one, and flip our work. All right, so now that our half double crochet row is all finished up, our following row is gonna be a back loop slip stitch row. So that's not gonna have any increases or decreases, so just as a refresher, right after we slip stitch, we're gonna chain one, Flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then from there, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until this becomes nice and snug on our arm, making sure that we end on a slip stitch row. So go ahead and get this portion all finished up and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so I am back with the cap portion of my sleeve and that's the portion that spills over the shoulder and just making it a little bit tighter so that it can cinch around our arm. Now I have a total of 26 rows, and now from here, we're gonna continue to do the same rows, but without the decreases, just so it can become completely horizontal on our arm when we wear it. So, since we all should have ended on a back loop slip stitch row, our following row is going to be another half double crochet row. So we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and then we're gonna start by putting one back loop single crochet, still for the same amount of single crochets that we had for the underarm portion. So if you guys had my numbers, I had a total of 11 single crochets, so I will be doing another 11 single crochets. All right, so now that I have my 11 back loop single crochets, from here, we're just going to automatically start doing our back loop half double crochets. And we're gonna to continue to do our back loop half double crochets until we have the same amount of stitches left as single crochets that we did for the underarm. So for me, I'm gonna leave 11 stitches and then close this row off by doing 11 single crochets for me. Then our following row is still going to be a back loop slip stitch row. And then from there, we're just going to continue to repeat our two previous rows 
until this becomes completely horizontal on our arm. And then I'll meet you guys back right after back loop slip to drill so we can work on the length. All right, so I am back with my evening out rows and I have a total of 32 rows. Now from here, we're just going to work on our sleeve and that's gonna be pretty simple. All we're gonna do is a half double crochet row with no increases and no decreases and then a back loop slip stitch row with also no increases and no decreases. So let's just get our half double crochet row all finished up. So what we're gonna do from here, since we should have slip stitched into that chain space, we're now going to start with a chain two that doesn't count as a stitch. That's just our turning chain for our half double crochet row. Flip our work and then just make our way all the way around, putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And that's it. We're just gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way around. Slip stitch into that second chain that we made when we started off this row. Chain one, flip our work, and then a back loop slip stitch row, and that is it. We're gonna continue to repeat those two rows until we get the length of the sleeve that we want, which mine is gonna be about three quarter length. So I'll meet you guys back right after back loop slip stitch row. All right, so I'm back with the entirety of my sleeve. I ended with a total of 56 rows, and we should have ended right after a slip stitch row. Now we're gonna start working on our itty bitty cuff. So all we're gonna do from here is just a single crochet row to get started for our cuff. So right after we slip stitched into that chain one space, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and then just make our way all the way around, putting one back loop single crochet into every stitch. And when we do, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I'll meet you back. So now that we've just done our single crochet row, we're now going to make a chain the length that we want our cuff to be. Now I would like for mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters, so I'm just gonna start by making a chain of five. Now that we have our chain, we're gonna be doing a slip stitch row. So start by blocking off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert hook with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, and pull through everything basically the same way that we did our waistband. Let's do the next one. Into that next chain, yarn over and pull through everything. And continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. And now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're gonna need to connect it into the base. So what we're gonna do is insert your hook into that following stitch into the base, yarn over and pull through everything. And then just to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, Pull through everything, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, exactly the same way that we did the waistband. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, and then make sure that we connect it into the base the same way that we just did. And from there, we're just gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam everything together. All right, so I've made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch rows, and I don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. So now we're just gonna seam it. And this seam is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam. So we're all gonna start by making sure that our work is still flipped right side out. We're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And then we'll get started with the first seam since we already know how to do this one. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through everything on our hook once when our hook is in through both the front and the back panel's corner. And then we're gonna start by finding that first available stitch and then inserting our hook in through that front loop or the loop that's nearest to us. Then we're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert your hook into that back loop. Once we have all three of those loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And then that's pretty much it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Do a chain up a one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that both of our sleeves are all finished up, the last thing we're gonna have to work on is our collar. So for the collar, we're gonna wanna start by making sure the work is flipped right side out and right side up, and then we're gonna be inserting our five millimeter hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the back. So let's go ahead and flip our work over. Now, just like how we've been working into all of our other side rows, we're gonna be putting two single crochets into every side half double crochet row and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, making our way across our back. Once we reach the shoulder portion, we're gonna put one single crochet into every stitch, and then continue with our two single crochet into every side half double and one single crochet into every side slip stitch, making our way down our neckline and then back all the way up. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up my single crochet row along my neckline and now we're going to work on the length of our collar. 
Now, I would like for the length of my collar to be just about an inch or two centimeters, so pretty much the same as my cuff. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of five. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert with a slip stitch, and we're gonna make our way down, putting one slip stitch into every chain. Now, just like we did for the cuff, we're gonna be slip stitching it into that next available stitch into the base. So, we're gonna find that stitch, insert your hook into there with a slip stitch to close off this first row, and then to work our way up to the following row, we're gonna slip stitch up that next stitch, flip our work, and then now we're gonna be doing back loop slip stitches. And from here, just continue to do our back loop slip stitch rows, making our way all the way around, making sure that we're connecting it into the base the same way that we just did, and I'll meet you back so that we can seam everything together. All right, so we have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. So now we're just going to seam up our collar together and this is going to be another outside loop slip stitch seam. So start off by making sure that our work is flipped right side out. Then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. And just to do the first one, we're going to find the first stitch and insert our hook only into that front loop. Find that first stitch within the back panel and insert your hook only into that back loop. And once we have those three loops, yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, then do a chain up of one and cut. And that is it, y'all. We are all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.